God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. Ah! You know what the Bible said? The Bible said in Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 that he pleased the father that the fullness of the Godhead so the father, the son and the spirit all dwelt in Jesus Christ bodily. That was the glory Jesus had. All the precedents in the world can't compare to him. If you see one archangel the glory of an archangel is greater than the glory of all the presidents put together. Meanwhile, it's an honor for an archangel to stand in God's presence. When Gabriel was punishing Zacharias, he said, I am Gabriel that standeth in the presence of God. I bring you this glad tidings and you dispute me, you will be dumb. Because he stands in God's presence, he has authority to punish men. But the Bible said, Jesus decided to strip himself of that glory. If you want to understand what humility is, that is humility. People say they are humble because they've not accused them. Because they've not insulted them. You see somebody walking and acting humble. He comes to church, he's walking like this until the usher talks to him anyhow. And then he will look at you and say, are you okay? Do you know me? Is it because I humbled myself? <laughs> That's why if you don't have the revelation of Jesus, even prayer will make you proud. And so prayer without believing in Jesus cannot provoke the outpouring. Until you believe in Christ and back it up with prayer. That's when the outpouring comes. The first protocol of the outpouring is prayer. We are praying, but Christ has not been preached. People have not met Jesus. We carry morality. It's not enough. We carry human tradition. It's not enough. People think morality and human tradition, discipline and human philosophy, can compare to Jesus, no one matches him. For a generation to see the outpouring, they must meet the Christ. They must know the Christ. That's why it is those who believe that the outpouring comes upon. And believing is not just to say, God will use me. Believing is to know that the Son of God became man. He died like a criminal to showcase the love of God towards you and also the humility of God. And he was buried as though he was hopeless. But on the third day, he now showed majesty. That no one had the power to take his life. It was in humility and submission to God that he laid it down. If you don't have that understanding, you will weaponize the power of God for your selfish gain. That's why today somebody prays for deaf ears, he opens. He says, he prints a complimentary card. Before you see me, you must pay 5,000 cities. He has not met Christ. If you meet Christ, you will know that whatever happens to you, you are a servant of God. You are a servant. You are a steward of the mysteries of God. And so God will insist that before there's an outpouring, a generation must meet Christ and believe him. Because the Holy Ghost comes after the Christ. He said the Holy Ghost, not many days from now, the Holy Ghost shall come. I have many things to tell you, you can't receive it. But when the Holy Ghost comes, so you meet Christ in order to meet the Holy Spirit. The outpouring that began on the day of Pentecost is still coming again. It's still available. Because God keeps pouring himself so that the body of Christ can ascend to different dimensions and different layers and different dispensations. The apostles received it on Pentecost day in Acts chapter 4. They gathered together and prayed and the Holy Ghost was poured forth again and it keeps being poured forth to empower a generation to live the life of wonder. So the first protocol, the first requirement is that Christ must be known. Christ must be believed. If the gospel is not preached and the generation does not meet Christ, no matter how deep our philosophies are, we will never see the outpouring. Find out all the revivers of the world. It was anchored on Jesus. You see broken men who came to submit to his majesty and say, we have seen our insufficiencies. We have come to understand that the flesh profits nothing. We've given up on the flesh. We submit to your throne. We submit to your government. You are our Lord. What will you have us do? Look upon us with mercy. That's when the outpouring comes. In fact, the prayer we pray breaks out of that state of brokenness. That we have judged ourselves and we have discovered there's nothing special apart in us apart from God. And so we humble ourselves before him. Then prayer, prayer emanates from the revelation of Christ. That revelation that is God is the one who counts, not you. No matter what happens. And even when he empowers you, you are not going out to represent yourself. You are going out to represent him.
If your prayer comes from there, then you are ready for an outpouring. Now, when the outpouring begins, then we enter the second protocol, which is to engage him. And this kind of engagement is not mechanical. Because when the spirit begins to move, the first thing the spirit does is that it stirs hunger. Is that hunger that becomes a phenomenon you see in the territory. Suddenly, everybody begins to gravitate in the direction of that outpouring. People want to see. People want to know what is happening. People be, every time there's an outpouring, it affects government, it affects economy, it affects the entire population because there's a hunger in the land. Suddenly, everybody begins to seek God. The guy who is sitting in government house wants to attend the prayer meeting. When I read about the way, the revival of way, Evan Roberts, they, they, they told us they had to retrench police officers because criminals reduced in number. Even thieves became hungry for God. They could not play the World Cup because people were no longer gravitating in the direction of football. Everybody wanted to have a taste of God. And so when the outpouring begins, God begins to stir hunger. Hunger in the hearts of men. And I tell you, apart from eternal life, the second gift the Holy Ghost will bring to you is the gift of hunger. If you don't have, the, if you don't have hunger, whatever God bets will die. That's why even a child, the first gift God gives him after life is hunger. When a child is born, he begins to look for what to eat. Because if that child doesn't eat, that child will die in that hospital. If the outpouring is triggered, the Holy Ghost tears hunger. That hunger is what makes for engagement. That's why in the course of the outpouring, people pray they are no longer conscious of time. People pray they are no longer conscious of season. People pray at night. They pray in the morning. They pray in the afternoon. You know that there's an outpouring. A hunger that men can curtail. A man will sit at home and something is pulling him to the prayer house. He said, as the deer panted after the water brooks. He said, so my soul longed after thee. Everywhere becomes a dry and a testy land. The only thing that matters is God's presence. And like the psalmist, you will say, show me thy glory. Let me see you even the way I saw you in the sanctuary. That's when we will leave our philosophies behind. We will leave our theology behind. And everybody will want to meet God. Where is this one who dwells in the secret place? Like Moses. The Bible said God hid himself. Moses was still finding him. He said God dwelled in deep darkness. And he said Moses stepped into that deep darkness where God was. It doesn't matter anymore. Anywhere God is, that becomes your destination. A hunger that you cannot explain. Only God can satisfy you. Those passion now opens the second layer, which is access. As men begin to press into God, what God does is that he begins to open the chambers of the spirit. It is those chambers we enter that make us begin to have encounters that empower us for the miraculous. And so you'll find a vulcanizer who society considers to be useless. Suddenly while he's praying, his eyes open and he hears a word. You will feed your generation. Because he heard you will feed your generation, a wisdom will come to him. And he will start something that will turn him to a millionaire. A horn has been exalted. And from a vulcanizer, he can become a wealthy man that becomes a holder of the biggest charity in the nation. You will ask yourself, what happened when the spirit be poured upon us from on high? The scripture will now become real to you. You will find a young boy who went to that place of prayer. Suddenly, we will sense oil on his hand. He has entered access. He moved from hunger to access. And that oil on his hand, even him doesn't know what it is. But he came home and they say somebody was barren and he touched the person. He was not even praying. And the person will sense the movement. And before you know, three weeks later, she takes him. He goes home, they say somebody can't walk. He touches the person and the person starts walking. And you are wondering, what school of theology did you go to? Who taught you? Who taught you the doctrine of healing? There are things that are deeper than doctrine. Oh yeah, has touched his hand. Oh yeah. And anything that man touches begins to walk. Because when we move from hunger, we come into access. This is when the wonder generation begins to emerge. We move from faith in Christ into engaging the spirit that begins from hunger to access. If our generation don't have access, we will be theologians. Our world is not looking for people who can explain Bible only. They want people who can prove Bible. And for us to prove Bible, there must be access. Have you prayed to that point where they touch your eyes with fire? So that when you see, your sight becomes like radiation. You can see beyond the wall. Because something touched your eyes. Did you not read about Isaiah? He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, 
I saw the Lord. And the moment he saw the Lord, he began to enter the chronicles of God concerning the Messiah and utter things that were not written before him. How did he know? Something touched him. Something touched him. Our generation needs to be touched. People graduate from Bible school with pride. They come quoting Greek and Hebrew. It's good for teaching. But the generation is not moved by the language you speak. Greek is like English. It's like Latin. There are many languages. The only thing the world is looking for is power. Is power. But for power to happen, we must turn it through hunger into access. Those your eyes can see things beyond the natural. Those your hands can produce things beyond the natural. But you must pray into access. He said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he weary? He said, give it power to the faint. Unto them that have no might, he increases strength. He said, even the youth shall fail and the young men shall utterly fall. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord. As you begin to engage him, he says, something happens to you. See, we are not normal creatures. That's why when Paul entered heaven and he saw the believers through identity, he stopped calling us men. You know, the world think we are all men. And so when Christians are talking, they, they say, what are these men saying? <laughs> when the outpouring happened, they locked the disciples behind closed doors. They thought they were men. They came back the next day. The prison was locked, but they were in the temple. They went and checked. Nobody tampered with the padlock. They now can travel like the wind. Because Jesus said, as the wind blow it. He said, thou listest not from whence it cometh or where it goeth. He said, so are they that are born by the Spirit of God. We are not ordinary, but we have not prayed into access. We have not engaged the Holy Ghost enough. When hunger came, you truncated hunger on Facebook. Chatting friends that will not add value to your life. When hunger came, you truncated hunger with a seasonal movie. When hunger came, you truncated hunger with gossip. When hunger came, you truncated hunger with bitterness. And the devil knows that something is starting on your inside. And they gang up three people and they gossip you. Instead of you to block your ears. You went and you were asking, what did she say? What did he say? Who cares what she says? Who cares what he says? I am traveling somewhere. The more they speak, the more I press. The more they fight, the more I press. My answer is not with men. My answer is in the spirit. And so when you go out today and they tell you three people were gossiping you, lift your hands and thank God. You have not started, but you are beginning to make news. Go back home and lock your door. Kakakatoa. They say, Hi, do we get to the people gossiping you? We come back to you and say, We are sorry, disciples. Pray from hunger and enter into access. The Bible said, Women receive their dead back to life. This is not a prerogative of apostles, it's for everyone that believes. If widows can walk in a dimension, do you imagine what that church looked like? That when people die, they are not looking for preachers, they are looking for widows. And somebody died, they meet a widow. A widow who should be looking for food suddenly become a headquarter for raising the dead. And they are bringing dead people and she's laying hands on them and they are waking up. You are asking that widow, by what theology are you operating? He said, when the spirit be poured upon us from high. If you kill your hunger, you have killed everything. Because hunger is the gateway to access. When you enter access, that's when your reality will be born. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they mount up with wings like the eagles. That's why I told you we are not normal. If you see your shape in the spirit, you become afraid of yourself. The Bible said we were fearfully and wonderfully made. When Paul saw us, he said, this man, it will be an error to call them men. He now created a name called new creatures. Because all of us are different in the spirit. In the natural, we all have two ears, two eyes, one nose, one mouth, two hands and two legs. In the spirit, some of us have wings. That's why when you start a business, business that takes people 10 years, in three months, you have surpassed everybody. And they are wondering, what are you doing? Wings. They mount up with wings like the eagle. Some of us have horns. He said, my horn have thou exalted like the horn of the unicorn. You have anointed me with fresh oil. When the outpouring come, your horn appears. That horn is the authority that you have. You now see a boy of 14 years addressing elders and you are wondering by what authority is the outpouring. When the outpouring comes, your ancient shape, the dimension of God you carry begin to manifest. Some of you who don't wear clothes in the spirit, you wear fire. But it will take the outpouring for a war to know. And so when you rise up, every time you talk, 
your voice become like the voice of the seraphims and so when god wants to pour a generation of iniquity he sends you there and as you are talking the criminal is crying the murderer is crying the bandit is crying even you don't know what is happening your tongue has been touched the outpouring has come some of us carry dimensions that are heavenly but it will take the outpouring for your horn to appear and so we pray from hunger into access i will not wait i will pray i will pray i will pray thank god for the outpouring but there's a responsibility of engagement of engagement i will pray i will pray i will pray i will pray oh i will pray if i don't pray since i will make oh, mess of me i don't want to go to heaven and discover I pray. that i have wings but i never flew I on earth I don't I want to go pray, to heaven and discover that I, I have pray, a torment of fire, I but pray, I never want. Satan will make me so happy. Yeah, like Katona, Baraka, Silakate. I will pray. Sete, 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 sete. I will pray. I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make me hey, so happy. We heard the story of John Wesley when the fire came on him, and he kept engaging God. He moved from hunger into access and the the shape of the man changed into a fiery creature they stopped him from having a church they stopped him from buying a land they stopped him from renting a property without billboards without flyer the only thing he had that they couldn't take was his father's grave and he went and stood on his father's grave and on that grave he began to roar because he was a fire that fire went into the city and everybody gathered there and when they asked him what happened they said i set myself on fire and i burned that's why the world come to see me he knew the secret of the outpouring that when you engage god something about you that is eternal begins to manifest we are not ordinary men there are dimensions we carry the one who created us knew what he installed there but it will take the outpouring for them to manifest do you know how we were created do you know how we were created before man was created the community of the godhead gathered he said let us make man we need the impute of the father we need the impute of the holy ghost we need the impute of the son there is something god put in you even you can't find it it will take the outpouring for it to manifest when it manifests you will see that you were fearfully and you were wonderfully made you were fearfully and you were wonderfully made that hand that had been writing notes and signing papers you don't know that that hand took and raised the dead that eye that only looks at sun moon and star you don't know that that eye can also see the secrets of god there is something on your inside when you begin to engage the outpouring that thing begins to manifest I will pray, I will pray, if I don't pray, set a will be a man so hard on me. I will pray, 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 if I don't pray, set a will be a man so hard on me. I will pray, I will pray. it begins with believing Christ and praying from that faith level into engaging the Holy Ghost from hunger to access until your horn is exalted can I tell you my story in my family in five years six people died the devil was coming at will and taking people even me I came under attack and all of us were living in fear until Jesus told me because I live you will live also I didn't know I had power to challenge demons. I didn't know I had powers to raise the dead. I didn't know I had powers to cause the sick. I can't tell you how many cancers have been healed. How many deaf ears have opened. I can't tell you how many people 
came back from the hospital of death sick death sick bed i saw him i was not even present there was a time they called me from a mountain that somebody died i say in the name of jesus come back to life the person woke up on the mountain how come people were dying in my house those dimensions were locked inside i never resurrected them the outpouring is a mountain of resurrection where your dimensions come alive <laughs> said you will be afraid of believing who you are the gospel is not just the revelation of Christ it's also the revelation of who we have become because of Christ the Bible said in 1st John 4 17 it said as he is so are you in this world as he is in heaven so are you in this world do you know what he put in you to make him speak like that it, something needs to resurrect on your inside that's what I'm saying there's something in you that you have not discovered Jesus was speaking in John 8 12 he said I'm the light of the world and then in Matthew 5 14 he said you are the light of the world he called himself light he called you light what is he talking about there's something in you that is divine you have not seen it that's what access brings you into access in Luke 10 16 he said whoever hears you hear me so the voice of God is not only in heaven. When we talk, people hear God. What has he put in us? Can somebody pray for one minute? Can somebody pray for one minute? to resurrect tonight I used to preach and every time I'm preaching I'm depending purely on atmosphere until I entered Pakistan and I didn't go with my keyboardist I didn't go with my worshippers and they didn't even understand English the guy who was translating for me tried his best but I couldn't flow because he was pulsating my utterances that was when the Holy Ghost told me you don't need an atmosphere he said you are the atmosphere when you come I come does a tornado need an atmosphere you are the atmosphere when you come he come that's why he sent you as a witness it's one level to enjoy atmospheres and it's beautiful but when you don't have it you still step out because the move of the spirit is locked on your inside but you have to engage the Holy Ghost from the place of hunger to the place of access from the place of hunger to the place of access and as the Holy Ghost hear this as the Holy Ghost begins to bring you into those corridors and you start receiving and awakening your weapons then the Holy Ghost will begin to give you instruction for you to obey because everything he gives you is for a purpose that's when somebody 
will rise up and a calling will come upon his life. The calling existed before time began, but it will take the outpouring for you to fulfill it. The Holy Ghost will now tell you, go and tell your generation about my power. Go and tell your generation about my mercy. Go and reveal to your generation about my wisdom. And people begin to go into different mountains with weapons of war. The way that happens is through promptings. You sit down and the Holy Ghost prompts you. Lay hand on the blind. And you lay hand and suddenly the eyes open. Then you will know that the cycle of the outpouring does not end until men become workers of signs and of wonders. Lift your hands toward heaven. this some of you will go home tonight and pray for a long time i just came to stir something in your heart so that something can resurrect because i don't have time i don't want to push it violently if we can be quiet now just lift your hands i came to awaken something on your inside the power of god will hit some of you violently here and a river will issue out of your spirit Do we have ushers here? Do we have ushers? A river is about to break out here. Do we have ushers here? Ushers, help me now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let that river break open now. Take that power. Ushers, help them. Ah, hey, hey, hey. Ah, 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 ah. Eyes that see, ears ah, that hear, ah, ah, hands that work miracles, take that power. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ushers, help them quickly. Ah, yeah. I want to lay hands on them now. Ah, 14 of them. Mareke Patakamo. Their generation of sons and wonders. Of living water, hey! Hey! take that fire out of my belly. Shall flow. I'm working in rivers. I'm working in the spirit. Rivers of living Weapons water. I'm yeah, telling your spirit, come forth. I'm down the line. Out of my belly. Shall flow. of power there is a power for walking miracles and casting out devils there
There's a power for economic influence. There's a power for leadership and governmental influence. It's not just working on miracles. The Lord is anointing some of you now for economic power, economic influence. Wherever you are, by the Spirit of God, take that power. Help them ushers. Let the river flow. He begins to bring every death into life. It's a life giving river. Oh, let it flow right till right now. Let the river flow. He begins to bring every death into life. He's a life giving river. Oh, let it flow right till right now. So out of my belly shall flow. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. messengers from the occultic world to come recruit young men into all forms of occultism promising them political power and influence the bible said the hand the heart of a king is in the hands of god god is the one who makes kings promotion does not come from the east nor the south it comes from the lord true influence comes from god lift your hands toward heaven it's not free, free mercy that will give you political influence. God needs leaders in governmental corridors. Father, there are some of you that have weapons for leadership. They come in form of wisdom. They come in form of favor. They come in form of influence. But they have been dormant. Father, by the Spirit, everyone here that has a political mantle, a mantle for leadership, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I release the fire for that activation. Take that fire now. Let it flow, them. let it flow. Flow, let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Flow, let it flow right here, right now. I want you to stretch your right hand in my direction. I'm sensing a strong anointing now for strange dimensions of miracles. Ushers, please help them. Ushers, please help them. This one will be a bit violent. Some of them will start running. It's an anointing because it will come with so much speed. Please help that one running. Take that fire. Those of you who are ministers, you have talked for too long. There is an apostolic grace that is coming upon this generation for emancipation, territorial takeover, and even spiritual covenants. Wherever you are, I stretch hands over you. Take that apostolic function. Power of the Holy Ghost. 